Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name is Volton, and today we're going to be getting what I'm pretty sure is going to be a three part series where I reunite the British Empire in Age of History 2. And I may have noticed that in this video, my usual intro is not there. And the reason for that is because after the channel rebrand, it is now obscure. Probably going to make a new one soon enough, but for now, no intro. Anyway, let's get on with the video. What was the British Empire? Basically, the largest empire to ever exist. It was the largest empire and also the largest colonial empire. It had territory in North America, South America, Europe obviously, Africa, Asia, and Oceania. It was literally the biggest empire to ever exist. In Age of 2, you can make your own formable countries, and I thought, hey, what if I added the British Empire? So I did. And now, I can reform the British Empire. In fact, I've done already in the game, but I figured, you know what, what if I do it again? but for YouTube. Now, although in the thumbnail, yes, it does show we are going to be attacking Africa today, we're also going to be handling the Middle East and the other obscure European territories. So, let's begin. Now, this is actually all recorded on a slightly modified version of Age of History 2. Although, yes, it does most, it is pretty much the same game. The main difference is, in this version, I have access to nukes. And since I have access to nukes, you know for a fact I'm going to be using those. My early preparation is going to be focused on techno technology, because I need a certain level to be able to start building nukes. My first actual invasion was of Ireland, because it was right there and I needed it for the Empire. And you know, it was pretty easy, the Irish are not very good at fighting, they just like potatoes. I I I'm getting cancelled for that joke. At this point, Sweden actually declared war on me. And I'm gonna be honest, I did not want to fight them, so I kept offering them peace, but they kept refusing. So, let's just say, I decided to make an example of Sweden, now that I had my first nuke. <laughs> Spoiler warning, they'll be back for more later. I already conquered all the extra territories I needed in Europe at this point, so it's time to move on to the Middle East. I first invaded Israel, and then Palestine, then Jordan, and finally Iraq. Northern Arabia was conquered. After that, we were able to capture all the Arabian territories we needed. We were also able to establish a buffer state out of North Yemen, which is actually more more south than what is considered South Yemen. Now, I figured in this way we would conquer the Middle East too because it's on the fine it basically borders African territories that we need anyway, and you know we need to capture it anyway, so whatever. Small side note, it was during this time that I was able to finally conquer Sweden and defeat them in the war. To punish them, obviously earlier I had nuked their capital, but also here I had set up a colony in Scandinavia called British Sweden. It was time for our first war in Africa itself. We invaded Egypt through Israel into the Sinai Peninsula. We were able to capture Egypt pretty quickly. And not long after we had the assimilation processes going on in Egypt, we quickly got our troops lined up on the Sudan, and the invasion was launched there as well. However, Spain at this time had declared war on us, and I, don't, I just didn't really want to fight them that much. And plus, I figured not. I may as well do this just to make the map look a bit more interesting. So, I sent in my forces into Spain, and after a little bit of war, the country was completely partitioned into Galicia, Aragon, Castile, and Catalonia. The troops there were then redirected over to Africa because we had a war to fight. This time it was against Abyssinia instead of Ethiopia for some reason. Now we needed to fight them because they had actually annexed Somaliland from Somalia. And we need that to form the empire. And plus, I got a new puppet state. And the invasion went pretty well. Once Abyssinia fell, we annexed Somaliland and set up a proper Ethiopian state. This one was just our puppet. Not long after that, we quickly launched military incursions into Uganda and Kenya. And finally, it was time for the big fish of what we're considering the end of the North Africa segment of this video, Tanzania. Now normally Tanzania, you see it looks like this normally, but the AI for Tanzania in this game, it had done some uh, work, we'll say. It went from this to this, conquering basically the entirety of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And this made them the 13th strongest country. I'm still number one and by a long shot, but 
Yikes. So I was a bit more hesitant to go through with the invasion now, but nonetheless, we went through with it. Now, to my surprise, I actually had extra troops after the invasion of the Congo. To the point where I need to start send after a while, I start sending some of my troops into Congo over to the mainland in Tanzania. Because they had still a good amount of troops there. And because of that, this war actually ended up being definitely still the hardest yet. It was still easy, but harder than the previous ones. After the invasion of Greater Tanzania, we decided to partition it into several states. First of all, Tanzania itself would be annexed by me. The former Republic of the Congo would become the Kingdom of the Congo and released as my puppet. The rest would just become the Congo. Well, except for this little Asian here known as Katanga, which I made independent. At this time, Sweden actually declared war on me for the fifth time. I just got the Argentines because I know you guys don't really care to see that. At this point, I just didn't really want to fight them anymore because this was the third time they decided to declare war on me. So I figured I may as well just give all of it to my colony in Scandinavia, which I did. I also decided to check up on Canada and North America in general, and uh, yeah, it turns out everyone decided to gang up on the United States, so now they practically didn't exist. That was bad news. I needed Canada to be weak so I could make the invasion easy. But, oh well, I, I guess not, that, 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 that's fine. Anyway, back to expansion in Africa. We quickly conquered Malawi. After that, I invaded Angola because they also took part in the collapse of Zambia. And plus, they also held Northern Namibia, which I needed. Finally, it was time. I needed to invade South Africa, which was easier said than done. After Tanzania fell, they became the strongest country in Africa. And unlike Tanzania, they actually have a ton of territory that is actually really heavily populated. So the invasion was gonna be a lot harder this time. And yeah, it was. I needed reinforcements desperately, but Africa is not notorious for having its Norman territories be populated heavily. So it was a bit hard, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. At some point they had actually landed troops in Cape Town which I mean, the war had to go on for longer. I had to constantly send troops to different parts of South Africa. It was a mess. It was a really big mess. It was very disorganized. Eventually, it, it all sorted itself out. After a little bit more warring, I was able to annex Eswatini and Lesotho, which meant that my expansion in Southern Africa was now complete. And now all that was left was the territories in West Africa. To get started in West Africa, it was easy. At some point, I'd already conquered Gambia, and now it's just simply a matter of moving my troops over there, so that way I could first invade Senegal. You might be thinking, uh, Voltan, Senegal was not colonized by the British, it was colonized by the French. You'd actually be right there. However, the reason why I need to invade them is because, first of all, they had grown a bit too big for my liking and also had created some serious border gore, and I just decided, no, may as well invade them, and plus, they also were currently holding onto Sierra Leone, and I needed that. So, the naval invasion of their territory was required. After they were finished off, I quickly naval invaded Ghana. After the naval invasion of Ghana, it was pretty easy from there. Because at that point, the British Empire actually, in reality, did not have that much territory in West Africa. So, I was kind of cocky. And I rounded up my troops at the border of Nigeria, the most populated African country, and launched my invasion. However, this invasion was a bit scuffed. The big reason for it being scuffed was that, at some point, you know I was mostly winning, Nigeria had a trick up their sleeve. Naval invasion. Meaning I lost a lot of progress in their most populated territories. Meaning the war had to last a lot longer than it realistically should have. And at that point, I just kinda didn't want to fight them anymore. So I just said, screw it, and just decided to just take what I could get. And that being actually everything I needed from them. And with that, we are now officially done in Africa. So what's next? Well, this will we'll continue our quest to re reunite the British Empire in part two. And in part two, we're gonna be taking a look at Asia. We already have a foothold in Asia due to us conquering the Middle East earlier. Our focus will be reuniting the British Raj. This was the crown jewel of the British Empire, so retaking it is going to be very important. Anyways, that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.